Hey guys, welcome to G Whiskey. I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Ledgig 9-year-old Bordeaux Red Wine Cask Matured. Stick around. All right, so we're doing a Legic today, and as many of you guys know, I love Legic. I think it's a fantastic brand. Unfortunately, they don't have a big core range. They don't have a lot of standard releases out there. In fact, they only have three that I can think of. They've got the Rioja, they've got the 10-year-old, and the 18-year-old. Uh, but luckily for us, they do have a series of special releases, and this is one of the bigger ones. This stuff was released last year in 2022, and I think it was a pretty wide release. Like, I've seen it in quite a few markets, so it's definitely around. Still, not too much chatter about this one, so going in, I wasn't sure what to expect, and I'm not even sure I would have pulled the trigger had I not tried to sample first. And the reason I wasn't sure at first is right there in the name. I'm not always convinced by wine cask maturations in whiskey, although I admit I have kind of changed my tune a little bit. Um, certainly, I've had plenty of disappointing wine cask matured whiskeys, but I have had some good ones too, so mixed bag. So really the only conclusion that I can draw about wine cask matured whiskey is sometimes good, sometimes bad. And uh, as far as conclusions go, not useful. Hello, welcome to store sell whiskey. I help you now. Yeah, hi, maybe you can help me. Uh, I'm curious about wine matured whiskey. I just want to know if it's any good. Ah, yes, wine maturing of whiskey. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. So, so should I try a wine matured whiskey? Should I buy a wine matured whiskey? Sometimes should, sometimes should not. F you. So I really never know what to expect when it comes to wine cask maturations, but if I see one that's been quite well received, or if I see one that's from a brand that I like that happens to be cast strength, I'll want to try that thing. Now what's special about this stuff is this is a full wine cask maturation, meaning it's not a finish, and that's actually quite rare. Wine casks are almost always used as finishes, so the fact that they went all in on these casks makes me think they probably, they probably had a lot of faith in the casks. But then again, it is Legic at cast strength, uh, so no matter how active your casks are going to be, Legic, which is Pita Tobermory, is famously a very formidable distillate, so it's not likely to be easily overpowered. So there we have it. It's a full wine cask maturation. It's a heavily peated distillate and it comes in at cast strength. I am not expecting a shrinking violet here. This is going to be a bold one. Uh, so let's find out about the whiskey. Let's jump into our review. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. As I said, this stuff is cast strength, so it comes in at a generous 56.8%, which is nice. Uh, it's going to be non-chill filtered, and I believe it's natural color as well. So I really like Legic bottles, and I particularly like this one. I like the small labels. I like the stylish modern design. Uh, they give it little pops of color, and those color pops match the whiskey really nicely here. So for presentation, I'm going to land on 4.5 out of 5 for this one. This does not say that it's natural color, and it definitely should. It does tell us that it's non-chill filtered. We've got a little blurb on the side that says it's fully matured in Bordeaux red wine casks. It gives us some basic tasting notes. So aside from not mentioning if it's natural color, it does give us all the information we want, and it looks great. So I did add a splash of water to this, and I suggest you do the same. On the nose, this isn't quite as tannic as I expected. There are tannins in here, but they're quite gentle. I'm getting a lot of fruit here. I'm getting stuff like marmalade, berry jam, apricots, banana, tart cherries, gooseberries, ginger. We also have sea salt, honey, salted caramel. There's even a little bit of eucalyptus in here. And of course, it's Legig, so we have this beautiful smokiness, and it's ever so slightly cheesy. Great nose. On the palate and finish, this is big, it's explosive, it's spicy. I'm first hit with chili and big vanilla. There's also earth, florals, salted caramel. There's lemoncello, there's orange hard candy, like think orange lollipops. There's banana, there's seawater, there's camphor. And yes, we do get some of the lechic cheesiness on the palate here as well. 
This gives us a long finish on smoke, pepper, cherry cola, and berry jam. All right, so this stuff is pretty much exactly what I wanted it to be. We get the house style, the cask influence is nice, and they strike a nice balance between those two things. And I'm starting to realize this is the kind of style that really works for Legic. As many of you know, I'm not hugely into sherry. Uh, I'm not particularly into wine, although again, some are good. Um, but because Legic is such a big, bold distillate, it can take on some pretty, some pretty active casks. We don't have to look any further than the 18. Huge sherry influence in that one, works great. Rioja, another good example, very wine forward, very cask forward, also works really well. In fact, my least favorite of the three core range expressions is the 10. And don't get me wrong, I love the 10. Legic just makes good stuff. But my point is, Legic seems very well suited for particularly active casks, and this one's no exception. I prefer this to the 10, I prefer to the Rioja. Now, of course, it's not gonna be as good as the 18. We don't have the delicacy, we don't have the complexity, but this was not designed to rival the 18. This stuff is cheaper, it's literally half the age, it's cast strength. Uh, this was not designed to be this ponderous, complex, sophisticated whiskey. This is more like the Japanese sex doll that I keep in my closet. It was just designed to be fun. Did I say that out loud? Fun really being the key word for this one. It's big, it's bold, it's bombastic. Now it is sweet. It's not cloying, but it is sweet, and we get a lot of soda notes in here. And the thing is, I don't actually drink a lot of soda. I mean, it's, it's not good for you. But I do sometimes like soda flavors in my whiskey, especially when they're not too cloying, not too sweet. They're fine here uh, as far as casks go. Again, this is a full red wine cask maturation, which is tricky, but this does exactly what you want a full maturation to do, which is it marries and integrates your flavors. So we've got our peaty funky legic distillate here and it sings in harmony with the casks. They're not like pulling in different directions. This doesn't feel like some kind of slapped on finish. Now this is not like a, a masterpiece or anything, it's a big, bold, peaty, casky belter. I think I've said fun about five times now, it is. And like everything else in whiskey, it just comes down to execution. Legic has a good track record with this style of whiskey, and I think they nailed this one, so my score is going to be 88. We got that funkiness, the peatiness, the cheesiness, it's fruity, it's coastal, it's full flavored, it's unique, it's interesting. It might be a touch sweet for some of you, but for me it works, it checks a lot of boxes, and it's just a fantastic whiskey, highly recommend it. So for me, this was great value, and that's because I picked this one up for about 60 US, so roughly 50 pounds. Uh, but I've been traveling recently and I saw it in other countries for substantially more than that. And even here in Taiwan, it sells for more than that outside the airport. I got this one at the airport. So I guess depends, depends on where you buy it. But yeah, honestly, at $60, I kind of feel like I'm getting away with something. If I were asked to pay a little bit more, I'd be okay with it. It is a fantastic whiskey. And that's probably not a good thing to say on this channel because there are some brands that watch this channel and I don't want them hearing that. So if you happen to be an executive at the Distel Group, you can, you can forget what I just said. Actually. Now granted, $90 might be pushing it a little bit, but I'll just say this. If the description sounds good to you, I think you're going to enjoy this whiskey. I really do. Um, it is age stated, it is cast strength, it's from a great distillery. Uh, I just hope you can find a good deal on it if you can't. I'll leave the rest up to you, but I'm recommending it. It's beautiful stuff. And that's it for today's review, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to help out the channel, I've got the Patreon. Otherwise, you can like, comment, subscribe. Always appreciated. And of course, I want to hear from you. Have you tried our Legic 9 here? What are your thoughts on the Legic Core range? What's your favorite expression from them? You can let me know that down below. Also, below in the comments, you can tell me what you want to see me review next. And I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.